This is episode 57 of Standing Out. Standing Out is a remarkable interview style podcast with the intention to highlight women and men making outstanding contributions in their field. This podcast is generously sponsored by Think Global. Think Global is a business advisory firm working with women entrepreneurs around the globe to scale their businesses to the next level. Today, I'd like to welcome Patty Wynn Stanley. Patty is president of the Aztec family of companies, all certified women owned businesses with locations in Tucson, Arizona, Austin and Waco, Texas, and an additional sales office in Dallas, Texas. Patty has grown Aztec to 100,000 square feet of manufacturing space that specializes in screen printed and embroidered apparel, including uniforms, promotional products, wide format print, chenille banners, signs, buttons, auditorium logos, jackets, sublimation, employee incentives, fulfillment, and design. Patty served as vice chair for small business for the Greater Austin Chamber in 2015 and is co-chair for ASID Reagan Early College High School Community Advisory Committee. She's on the board of directors for Women's Business Council Southwest and won Regional Advocate of the Year in 2010, the Women Working Together in the Lily Knox Investing in Growth Award in 2011 and 2015, and Weeby Advocate of the Year in 2017. Patty also represents WeBank as an advocate of the WeBank Forum, where she is the chair of the Government Committee and served as chair of the 2015 National Conference Host Committee. She's a member of Webeck West, where she was nominated for a Weeby Advocate of the Year in 2012 and serves as forum chair for Tucson. Patty also serves on the board of the Go for Green Women's Business Conference, where she won the Mary Schnack Women Helping Women Award in 2015. She was named an Enterprising Woman of the Year by Enterprising Woman Magazine and is the member of the Women's President Organization she served on steering the committee for the 2013 Annual Conference. Patty speaks on the benefits of WOSB certification and the realities of doing business for federal government, WI. PP, American Express Open, and the SBA. Patty has a BA from the University of Mississippi and is a graduate of the Tuck WeBank Executive Program and attended the Initiative for Competitive City Harvard Executive Program from 2009 to 2013. Patty, wow, oh my gosh. How? <laughs> <That's an asshole. laughs> oh, oh my gosh, you run a business and you get amazing awards. How on earth do you have time? <laughs> I have loved lots of great friends that nominate me for awards and I think oh, um, that when you're involved you know so that you you have to be involved to meet people and I think that just puts you in a position where people consider you for those kinds of awards. I think that's a perfect start to jump in. Our company is also WeBank certified and we're um, brand newly certified. I think we've had it for maybe three or four months now. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we hear quite a bit is, yes, you have to get the certification, but then it's also so much about building the relationship and being visible. Do you think these awards like really help in that department? I think that they give you the opportunity to meet other people outside of your normal realm that you would be in every day. Right. Nothing happens fast. So you can't think that certification is going to get you something. I'm, I'm, I had a lady one time that I was taking around, introduce people and yeah. introduced her to a corporate person, supplier diversity professional. And she, the, the lady looked at her and said, well, I registered on your site and I didn't get anything. And that's just not the way it happens. You have to show up and you have to know people. So in, in that regard, you end up being nominated for things because I, I love to help people. That yeah. should probably be what I'm doing now is promoting. And so it puts me in a position to know lots of people like you and to help other people as well as myself. I love that. How did you get into manufacturing? Well, it's kind of a crazy story. We actually <laughs> owned, <laughs> because of a hurricane, yeah. um, we actually owned um, a, a property in Florida on the Panhandle, and Hurricane Ivan was the one after after Katrina, mm -hmm. and uh, it blew our family property away. And oh, we wow. rented it to you know keep it up because it's very expensive to keep something up on the beach. And since we used it as a rental property, we had to replace property, had to replace a business with a business, and so. My son was um, buying t-shirts. He was the t-shirt chair for one of his organizations. He was buying t-shirts from the man that owned this company. And his wife had gotten transferred to Houston and he didn't, she didn't want to be in Houston with two little boys and a dog. 
and have her husband in Austin. So it just turned out my son introduced us and just kind of went from there. I never would have dreamed that I would have this equip kind of equipment. It's right. pretty rare for women and women um, to alone to be in this kind of a business. My husband and children have their own businesses, so mm. they are not involved on an everyday basis with it. Yeah. What is that like walking into your facility with that equipment? Are you, I feel like I'd be constantly in awe. Like, look <laughs> at that thing do its thing, you know? <laughs> you know, a long time ago, screen printing was not that long ago, actually. Yeah. There were 100% um, cotton t-shirts, a 50-50, and then a company called American Apparel had some fashion forward shirts. Yeah. It was pretty straightforward to screen print now, and everything was in the United States you know, it was in the United, made in the United States. So now with all the different fibers and the different countries and, mm -hmm. and the different products and everybody's coming out with fashion forward, the way they feel and the way, it, so yeah. that's the difference in how the, you know, the fibers lay on the shirt. It's, it's more of a now of a science and an art combined. Mm -hmm. And the people who are the screen printers that actually do this work are pretty incredible people with a pretty incredible talent. Oh, wow. And people don't really think of that when they think of printing a t-shirt. They just think you're going to print a t-shirt. There's a lot more to it than just that. Yeah, no, I totally get what you're saying. It sounds so commodity, like, oh, put our logo on the t-shirt or whatever it is. But then when I think of what's in my closet and my favorite t-shirts, they're the ones with the fit where the, the, um, the screen printing lays just right on me. Like it's a whole, mm -hmm. a whole art to it. Yeah, it's real interesting, too, because it's just like when we sell USB drives, it depends, the pricing depends on the RAM market. And when we sell T-shirts, it depends on the cotton market. So nobody really thinks about the pricing of promotional products or promotional apparel being based on the commodities market. Right. No, you're right. I, You just blew my mind with that. <laughs> I've never thought of it that way. So then, so you're doing business, um, you're doing B2B business, but then also federal government business. Mm -hmm. right? um, for those federal, state, and local, because you don't want people to forget about your local, state, county, and city government, because those are huge opportunities as well. And since you're so close, do you feel, um, I know easier is never the right word in business because things take a long time and you just have to keep working it. But do you feel like, I can't think of another word other than easier. It, it's easier to get a local government as clients or do you feel like, it doesn't matter, I guess is the question. Well, um, when you deal with the federal government, you have what's called FAR regulations and you have to know what that is. It's F-A-R and then it has lots of numbers behind it and they're fairly complicated. And when you get a bid from the government, they will ha they'll have a list of FAR regulations that you have to follow. So you really have to be, and you have to follow them. Okay. So you really have to be um, prepared and know what those mean. So when, when I get something from a federal contracting officer and it says product must be made in America, the whole thing has to be made in America. You know, not, I can't go find a shirt that was made in China, but sold here. So following those rules are much more time consuming and take much more energy okay. to focus than state and local. And also if you, if you can be a part of your state and local, you know, activities like in Texas, we have something called Texas hub. It's different than hub zone, but it's um, a, a certification that we get here in the state of Texas that allows us and they have hub events. It's the same thing as with WeBank or anything else. You have to go to them and you have to know the people because they have to think of you when you they hear apparel, they need to think or say call Aztec. Mm -hmm. So it's still it's just it's basically just showing up and getting to know people. Right, right. Do you have any um tips or advice on how to maximize your presence at these events, whether it be WeBank or Hub or something like that? Well, I think you have to get involved. You have to take um, volunteer positions. I know within WeBank, um, within your large, local, WeBank is the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, which is a certifying agency um, for women-owned businesses. And it is divided into 14 regional partner organizations. And they, your, your partner organization, which 
I'm in North Texas, so mine is out of Arlington, Texas, the Women's Business Council Southwest, and then my Tucson office is the Women's Business Council West out of Mesa, Arizona. They have events as well as the big national events in, 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 um, that WeBank has. So going to those local events is pretty, is the same, has the same importance. You have to know them. And then when you go to the national events and they see you there, they see that you are, you know, taking that next step. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with city and state, you know, just, you have to be present. Yeah. Uh, and also, um, I had a lady that was the supplier diversity person several years ago for the Walt Disney companies. Yeah. And she said, you have to set yourself aside. She said, whether it's certifications or it's something like ISO certification or Six Sigma or whatever it is, do what you need to do. We bank, WPO, whatever it is, Minority Council, Veterano, whatever you have that you can get, take the time to go and get it and be active. Mm-hmm. What do you think are the biggest benefits of those certifications? Is it is it the opening doors to, to new people or like what do you feel? Well, I think it's the opportunity to meet new people, but it's it's more than that. It's an opportunity to find mentors, all sorts of mentors. Um, I ha- uh, Go for the Greens is a conference that I work on. It's a very small business conference at Disney every year, um, women's business conference, and it's very small. And I was meeting with um, a lady, or sitting next to a lady at lunch who worked for a big corporation, and she was the head of their marketing, of marketing in Florida. And she said, gosh, I wish I could work with you, but we have a promotional contract, so we can't work with you. And I had my capability statement, which everyone should have if they don't. <laughs> I said, well, you're the head of marketing. Would you just take my capability statement and take a look at it and tell me what you think? Because I just redone it. And she said, let's do something else. I'll do better than that. I'll take it back home. I'll look at it. Let's get on the phone and I'll give you a couple of hours to review it. So I would have never gotten the head of marketing for this large corporation to help me if I hadn't been in the right place at the right time. So you have to look at it as more than just getting business. There are all kinds of ways that people that you meet can give you help and do things right, to make right. you move your business forward. You just have to figure out what that is, but you also have to pay it back. You know, you have to help people. So if I know someone who's does, who needs your services, I'm going to give them your name and right, say, right. call Katrina because I know she's really good at what she does and you can count on her to follow through. And right. I'd say quickly, that's a whole nother thing. If you get an opportunity especially in the government space, you have to follow through and you have to do a good job because don't go and apply, don't go and try to get a contract for something that needs a bond if you can't get a bond and that right. happen. So don't right. ever ask someone to go out on a limb for you to um, do something to help you get work and then be in a position where you can't follow through because bad past performance does not go away. Well, and you would think, right, that, and that's the first thing to burn all the bridges, essentially, mm-hmm. right? Right. One of the tips, because um, when we're, you know, when we as business owners are doing the application and doing our capability statement, I remember I was looking at those, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, the NIX codes, the mm-hmm. NICS. Yes. And I was trying to figure out everything in marketing that we could possibly do, and someone looked at it, um, a friend of mine who's also certified she looked at it and she's like, yes, you can do those things, but that's not your core competency. So take that one off because you don't want to burn that bridge. If they call you and say, can you do this? And you're like, kind of, um, that's, that's not the best way to approach business. So choosing but, a perfect fit for you is a better approach. But also you can always partner. And that's the great thing about the network of other business owners, whether it's WeBank network or your, your local network or just your friends or whoever. So I might not be able to build signs in my plant, but I have a partner that's actually a veteran owned company that builds signs. And so we sell a lot of signs. Mm. So, um, it's not, I don't have the machine downstairs, but I can't possibly have every machine that makes every single item because there's over 500,000 promotional items. But we have, um, we have invested quite a bit in technology that allows us to do those sorts of things, to find partners and to do the kinds of things that we would need to take on things. But you're right. You never want to take on something that if you are, if you're a, a, a marketing person, you don't want to take on 
mail management, you know, managing your right. mail, the mail room. I mean, right. you know, it's a print management is what it's called. Right. You can get yourself in trouble. Yeah. Well, and I love that partner approach because that that's, I, I've been hearing the terms tier one and tier two mm -hmm. quite a bit. And it, it yes. sounds like that's what you're talking about with the partner piece. And so, um, so basically tier one is working directly with the corporate or the government entity. And then tier two is the partner for some supplemental pieces. Or it can be another small business. There are so many amazing small businesses. It does not have to be a big business. And sometimes corporations are tier two to the smaller business, mm. but you have to know what you're getting into. And, and right. another thing that we, we don't do very well as business owners is we don't partner with competitors. Oh. And we, and we need to do that. You need to, to be open to partner with competitors. Um, I make a product in one of my companies, but it's hard for us to make very many. Mm -hmm. And I've got another lady who I know who has a, a, a big machine that prints the same product. Yeah. And I, I can buy through her. Sometimes it's better for me to go through her to get my products than to do them ourselves. Yeah. So it really just depends on what the situation is. And not always, you're not always going to want to compete with your competitor, I mean, uh, work with your competitor and you're going right. to want to have a really good agreement. In place. Right. <laughs> so you don't want to just go out and do that. But, but yeah. the bigger your network is, the better opportunity you have. And the more you are willing to volunteer and get out there, whether it's helping to get items for something as simple as helping to get items for um, a silent auction. Right. Or, right. or, or um, I think you read in my bio that I'm very proud of being on the, the, uh, co-chair of the community advisory committee for Reagan High School mm -hmm. um, did do the work to make that become an early college high school and we actually have professors that come to, to come there and teach so the kids are not leaving there we have a partnership with Austin Community College and I've met so many incredible people by doing that so that's not really partnering with other business people but it's just something that has made me happy in my life to be yeah. able to say I'm part of that and it has given me some opportunities as well. I think there's so much truth in that. If you do some of those things that you're passionate about and you just want to do, you mm -hmm. do amazing people along the way. And you're like, well, this is also good for business, but it, it was good for my heart and I just wanted to do right. it. You know, and you have to do those things. You can't work all the time. Yeah. Right. No, sure. truly. Uh, well, as we wrap up, what is one thing that's sort of on your radar being so integrated into these organizations, what's on your radar that you feel like, hey, that's going to be a trend we're all talking about in another year or two from now? Oh, gosh. Um, well, you know, I'm in a, a the promotional products, yeah. a print, but I'm a printer. So, you know, I always have to figure out ways to set myself apart from everyone else and how to come out, how to figure out where that next big product is. And, you know, one of the big things everybody's talking about these days is disruption. You know, what can we do in our industry to, to be a disruptor and to find things that no one else has done? So um, I've really tried to figure out ways that I can do that. And as a result, we now have uh, my son's actually on restaurants. And so they put together some software that helps them get information that they need from for every day to get the numbers and their their oh, costs. Wow. And, things. and there's a part of that that is actually a uniform program. So we've actually built that together. We have um, um, software engineers on staff mm -hmm. and we've actually built that product together and we are, have launched it in the last few months. And that's really exciting because oh, awesome. software business, um, but it gives us actually another form of revenue. We work with restaurants a lot anyway. So it yeah. just gives us another opportunity to get in front of others and um, has made his life a whole lot easier because he now has all the numbers. He had it already in his CRM yeah. system, POS system point of sale system, but now it gives him every, that information that was in that system right in front of him. So it's kind oh, of a complicated answer really to your cool. question, but I think you really just have to look at your energy, at your industry and figure out what you can do to be disruptive and to figure out the next step. Yeah. And it is that constant piece of figuring out the next step, because even if it's not um, a huge shift in business, oftentimes it's mm -hmm. another revenue stream. Um, and it's another message to put out there to the world that, hey, this is new and different and we're constantly innovating, innovating and we're standing out in our space. I think that's we're trying to. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, just one more thing, if I can throw this in, I think that um, that it's so important to make yourself get up. And when you own your 
our own company and we have four locations. So I'm kind of on different time zones. So I'm sort of oh, wow. going all day, two hours, <laughs> earlier, two hours later. And, and sometimes I just say, I think I cannot get up and go to one more event. I, I just cannot do it. But I always make myself get up and go. And those are the good ones. Yeah. The ones that I make myself go to are always the ones where I meet someone or, you know, there's an opportunity. So um, I would just tell people that are especially small business owners or people who are starting or even not, even once wow. they've been around a while, just get up and go and be present because that and, and give yourself every opportunity to get certifications and information and be an expert in your field. And there's so much encouragement behind that get up and go be present because the when you say you don't want to go to a, an event but you're going to go anyway internally i'm already feeling like well i'm just going to make it awesome since i'm here now you know mm -hmm. what i mean exactly. <laughs> and then it is so that's perfect patty thank you so much for being here i appreciate well, thank it. you I, I enjoyed it thank you so much for oh, having me good. you're welcome